Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Sport and today I'll be doing my very first product review of the new Thrustmaster AVA joystick base. Now in the spirit of full disclosure, Thrustmaster sent me this base a few weeks ago to feature in a video and a review on my own time. They made no expectations as to what I could and couldn't talk about, so I'll do my best to give a fair and objective first impression. In fact, there were so little expectations. The way this came about was a friend reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to review this? And two weeks later, this package showed up on my doorstep. In this video, we'll do a quick unboxing of the AVA base, take a look at the internals of it, and take it for a quick lap around the aircraft carrier in DCS world to get some first impressions. Let's get started. Okay, let's start off by getting it out of its shipping box. As we open the top, we can see that we have the Thrustmaster AVA, or Advanced Versatile Aviation. The consumer box itself is very sharp and modern looking, with outlines of a Super Hornet, Cessna Caravan, EC-135 helicopter, and an Airbus, which gives us an idea for the wide range of application. As expected, it's compatible with the Viper and Hornet grips from Thrustmaster, and it's safe to assume with other grips that use a 5-pin mini DIN connector. Additionally, the image at the bottom indicates that there is a level of customization and modularity depending on your preferences. This is confirmed on the other side of the box where it advertises a quality build, customization, and ease of use. As we open the box itself, we first find registration and warranty cards, as well as some supporting instructional documentation. Below that is some recyclable vacuum form packaging that contains all the hardware. Within this, we can find a lot of our spare equipment for customization, including replacement springs, cams, and Allen keys. Next are the range of motion limit rings, a USB-A to C cable, and the AVA base itself. When I first picked it up, I immediately noticed the heft to the unit, and you can clearly see the mini DIN connector on the threaded mount that has become standard for Thrustmaster joysticks. On the back, we have a USB-C connector, a reset button, and a power indication light, and overall, I'm impressed with the clean design of everything. On the top here, we also have adjustment screws that are probably used for adjusting the amount of dampening force, and it feels like there are some very stiff springs already installed. Opening up the instructions, I can see that we can remove these four screws on the top plate to remove the cover and access the customizable features of the AVA. According to this, we have the option to choose between a hard, medium, and soft spring setup, as well as choose between two different cam profiles. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what's inside. Okay, screws removed and we can simply lift the one piece dust cover off. On initial glance, it looks like that we have the dark colored hard springs already installed. And the other sets are color coded in a medium silver and a bright silver for medium and soft respectively. Additionally, it seems that we have the jet cam profile installed which is labeled on the front right here and we have the option for arrow which seems to have a slightly more gentle profile. The overall build quality of the internals is impressive, with a metal bottom plate and the only apparent use of plastic being this bottom surround and the trim around the base of the threaded mounting shaft. The rest of the pieces seem to be milled aluminum, nothing rattles, and it seems to be assembled quite well. One of the things I like about the dust cover being removable like this is I can make changes to the springs and cams without having to remove the whole unit from my desk mount. However, at this point, I'm going to leave it configured as is and get the dust cover back on so I can see how it flies. Finally sitting behind the AVA, one of the best features that becomes immediately apparent is the incredible range of motion available to you. Thrustmaster advertises a whopping 43 degrees of stick travel with the largest of three gimbal limit rings provided. So the real question is, how does it feel to fly? Well, in order to give it a proper test, I'm going to do a Case 1 recovery in the DCS FA-18 Hornet in order to see if the AVA delivers on its promise of smoothness and precision. Let's take a look. Ah. 
I immediately feel at home with this stick. There's no binding in the controls, and the soft center feel of the cam that came installed make my new corrections very easy. And overall, the control forces feel balanced along the entire range of motion. For those of you who like a center desk mount like I do, I'd recommend purchasing the AVA offset adapter for a more natural hand position. As we turn in from the abeam point, this is as good a time as any to ask Thrustmaster or any of the other big names to finally release an affordable force feedback base. In lieu of that, I wish the AVA had internal pneumatic dampers that worked in conjunction with the springs to mimic the return to center feel that real flight controls have. Either of those features would set it far above any of its competition. Okay, so not bad considering that was my first carrier approach in several months, and I have to say, a lot of that was down to how easy the AVA made it feel. While it's not groundbreaking in its design and features, its price point makes it very reasonable compared to the competition. In fact, it's safe to say it'll be replacing the Verpal Mongoose T50 that I've been using for over 7 years. I hope you enjoyed this review of the Thrustmaster AVA. I plan on doing more hardware reviews in the future, and if it's something you'd like to see more of, go ahead and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Sport, and remember, fly good, don't suck, and I'll see you next time.